Hello everyone and welcome back to the EGFC. My name is Soy. Joining me for the last two matches of the night is Tenric on this side. <laughs> Put him there on the wrong side. But uh, we're getting ready for some more Collegiate Rocket League action. Apologies for the delay. We're getting ready for Southern Utah Thunderbirds up against the Butler Bulldogs. Two teams at 3-1 and one looking to differentiate themselves from the pack. Yeah, it, it was funny. So I walked into this. I, I was going to make the best like Hawaii joke about it being in the last <laughs> time slot when I came to cast today. And lo and behold, Hawaii is the first time slot of the back half of the night. And um, Hawaii didn't even know that. So unfortunately, <laughs> we've had to postpone that game. So instead, we're starting off with, like you said, Southern Utah versus Butler. Now, while these records are the same, their paths to get there have been quite different. In Southern Utah, we've only seen them against one opponent this entire season. Both of their back-to-back -back games against Washington State University, which they won 3-0. But both of their other games, one has been a forfeit loss and one a forfeit win. So we haven't really seen a true test of strength for them yet this season. Yeah, a true test of metal is really what this game is for the side of Southern Utah. Butler, on the other hand, they've looked really strong so far. Dropped one early this season, but since then have looked really good. The, this combo of Kai, Munch, and uh, Mora uh, uh, Morales, I believe, is that third member, has looked fantastic so far this season. Butler in the kind of light blue coloring here on the field, but we'll see what they can do here is a minute gone by. Nothing too enticing so far until that chance. Morales gets shut down by D-Town. First big save of the game is made. Yeah, you got to remember that loss that Butler has on its record, that was also a forfeit. And it was in the very first week of the season. Since then, they've seen nothing but good tidings. They've dropped a couple games here and there, but they've mostly dominated. But D-Town is actually the first to score after Southern Utah. They press that envelope in for the offense after a couple attempts, and it pays off. Morales just barely loses control of that ball and it ramps up perfectly in D-Town with a bullet to the top of the net. 72 miles per hour into that upper third. Well placed shot from Southern Utah jumping out to an early lead. Just what they were looking for in a series like this. And now Butler trying to regress. Akashi the first to do it but we'll get stopped and now Southern Utah back on their own lineup. The wins against Washington State despite not super decisive, were incredibly dominating. And so Southern Utah, uh, for all we know, they could be a godsend of a team and they just haven't gotten the chance to prove it yet. So, I mean, this kind of, a, of attack is, is not entirely surprising. It's just, it's crazy to watch a, a team basically start from scratch so deep into the season. Yeah, really interesting to watch this team play as they get the two goal lead there very well done. We'll see if they can get anything more off the back of it. Morales trying to make something happen. Akashi will send this one forward, but D-Town so quick to cut that play off. And Southern Utah continuing to kind of up the pace of this game. Butler, they like to rely on those technical plays. Players like Akashi and Morales have really benefited from those highly technical air dribbles. When they are given space, they can make so much happen. But Southern Utah doing a really good job so far making sure that that space is very minimal. Nowhere to really go with this ball in D-Town. Well, kind of an odd touch defensively right to the teeth of the Butler offense, but they won't be able to do too much so far. Munch now trying to make a play off the wall here. The pinch pass is there, but no one able to follow up on a shot. Two players after this ball, and so D-Town and company will get the clear. I mean, it, it's simple and plain. Butler University, they know how to keep this back and forth going. They're able to counterattack pretty easily, and their game flow is really solid. They clearly have a solid attack plan. There's actually a great ricochet, but it doesn't bounce in. It careens over the curb, and D-Town is there just in time to save. Gets their second right after after Butler tries to press that attack further off the crossbar. D-Town tries to carry it further. Munch off the backboard again. Butler has the setup available. Morales gets stopped by a triple commit. So now Southern Utah's got a back over and Munch is gonna take advantage of it. Butler, they finally have the attack long enough and steal away enough resources to make it happen. And now they're only one goal behind again. Great shot there from Munch and Munch has really stepped up this season in particular. He currently leads Butler in terms of goal scoring with 15 on the season. And he's gotten them within striking distance once more. Two minutes remaining here. What a shot there out of the corner, but another huge save. Hawken with a chance, the bouncer up high, the rebound forked away. Not enough on it to get that one in. Now Munch 
trying to make a play here through the midfield. It finds its way back into the Butler half. Their defense has to be sturdy here. Got to make sure they don't give up one more and keep this one out of reach. Akashi or Kai moving this ball forward off the wall. Chance in front. Silence gets the block and Morales will have to backtrack to make a play here. But as we approach that minute mark remaining, very back and forth between these two. Yeah, the great aggression coming from Southern Utah right off the gate. That lethality that came from those early attacks was what got them mislead. But now about the university, they forced them to press the brakes a little bit. And, and they've been shutting out D-Town a lot more, who seems to be the fulcrum for a lot of these offensive cycles that Southern Utah brings to the table. As soon as D-Town has to get out of the situation, as soon as D-Town is forced away from this ball, Butler can try and take advantage of it a little bit more and so they do. 45 seconds to go. Back passing all the way through. And Akashi actually gets the flip to get some extra distance. At least back to midfield. But they're too swarmed around the ball. And so they've got to give some space over. So Southern Utah, they can now grab this space back. But Akashi winning a 50. Morales clearing the skies. But now it's Butler that's overcommitted to the forward aggression. And they lose the trajectory on the ball. Handing time back over to Southern Utah. And that is not time that Butler has to play with. They are still this one go behind. And now they only have 20 seconds left to prevent this first game from going Southern Utah's way. Silence has a shot here, won't be on target, but it's still burning a lot of clock. Silence can't get back to it. There's a good save by Munch, but can Butler break out of their own zone now? Morales up for this one, but loses the race to Silence. Akashi getting demoed too, and surely this one touches the ground. No, Munch able to keep it up. Akashi with the flick forward. They'll be able to use the boards to keep this up in the air. They got it all the way down into the box, but not enough in the tank to get a good shot off and Southern Utah will take game one. And that, that last attack was definitely looking dicey, so I can say without a shadow of a doubt, Soy, that neither of these teams are out of the woods yet. That game could have gone anybody's way. Butler, two minutes in, they woke up, they decided to counterattack a little bit better. Their defensive play, their preventative play became a lot better, and, and they just looked like a completely different team against Southern Utah by the end of that game. Sadly, Southern Utah, they could still hold their own just long enough, but, I mean, we could see a goal come out at any time, and I really think that this is going to be a crazy back and forth. The Big East often is known for their offensive firepower and how chaotic that that region or that conference can be. And Butler, no exception. I mean, Kai, you got to remember this Butler squad way back in season two, they made the semifinals on a big upset run. They took down the number one seed of Delaware. They took down RIT to get there. So they've got the firepower to contest with some of these top teams, but their Morales! defense is coming to question. And Morales with a beautiful air dribble to open up game two. That is post kickoff off of midfield. What a beautiful carry to get this started for BU. And that is the best goal we have seen all series and now. The ball is already in Southern Utah's court. Six seconds in, another line drive from Akashi this time. Has to be saved by D-Town, and Morales doesn't have the boost to keep the aggression, but Akashi can bring it back to this corner, and BU is not letting up yet. The pressure here and that pop-off potential showing its face early in game number two. Now we'll have to see a silence, a chance here. They'll get the clear. D-Town is downfield. Hard angle off the backboard, too far, and Hawken will have to regroup with this ball. Sending it into the corner once more, ramping up. They get the bump on Kai and the drop down pass, and I don't think his teammate was quite ready for it. Now Morales, looking for a flick, has a play to Munch. Kai and Morales moving forward with this one. Akashi's shot is good. The dart is low, but it's on target, and Butler's up 2 nothing. They are draining these resources so quickly, Soy. This is like night and day between games one and two. It's absolute mastery. Really incredible stuff coming from Butler. Only 52 seconds in, and they are just winning every long-term interaction. Akashi getting the early on that kickoff, and now Morales with the quicker pickup. Butler has awoken up here and now it's on Southern Utah to keep this streak afloat. Hawking with the early save, Munchik keeps it back up and Akashi elects to stay closer to that goal. Unfortunately not getting the right angle but now comes Morales, the potential double tap. No, not high enough and Silence can try and run away with it. Overpass two but now has to play the psychological battle against Akashi and too much time is spent doing so so Munch can take the reins. Now Southern Utah has to try and find their push back out here but Butler they are just stepping on this gas pedal so much more 
now that they know that they can unlock Southern Utah, that was my fear. So it was that Southern Utah, that benchmark was not enough to define what they could do, and they might just become too predictable despite their volatility. It's one of those things where everything has worked for them the past couple of weeks. This is their first real test. Now they're down two goals, three minutes on the clock, and Butler, they are the ones who have possession here. They're swarming. Their defense able to make some plays, but a chance here maybe off the intercept. Munch gets a good block. Morales now in the corner to control it once more. And Butler with the ball in the hood of their car, ever dangerous. Short pass there, silence able to block it away and as we approach that halftime marker another shot on Hawken has to make this save southern utah the thunderbirds looking to regroup and get this offense going but maybe stalling out for too long butler now has boost to defend still a solid amount of time to work with but to e-town that's a great way to get this second half of the game started punching it down all the way from the goal area at this point and it really did require only two tiny 1v1s and not even really that to an extent after Akashi got faked out on that midline. I, that was great stuff coming from Southern Utah's support. They really know how to keep this teamwork going despite the deficit. They're willing to work with it and even try and come back from it. Butler, though, it came to a point where everything had been drained. It was a long-term plan. It was a waiting game. And now it's a question of whether Butler can fall for it. Silence has a bit of a runaway here into the upper 90. Munch misses it, but it's off target. It just barely saved the way. Morales with the clear tragedy for SUU. Hawking was so close to having the read and having the equalizer, but it's just barely out of reach of their fingertips. Morales can't find a touch off this corner and Butler keeping the pressure on best they can here. Akashi off the ceiling. D-Town should be there to respond. Morales trying to stall this one out, but D-Town once again finding a good touch. And here comes Southern Utah. Silence in an odd spot. Gets one forward, but everyone on Butler is there. A passing play to get out of the zone. And now Hawken out of their own corner. Right down center field, a demo on the back line. Morales, hard shot, couldn't cut the angle, but the punch in from Munch on the rebound makes it three to one. Wow, great work done here by Morales to Munch. That is such a great bounce off. Butler working with a lot there. And now that two goal gap is back. 90 seconds to go for Southern Utah to try and find their second game into Butler already doing so much damage though to this series and potentially able to cement themselves as a true powerhouse in the making here in EGF4. Munch, as well as the rest of BU, now circling, corralling from this corner. There's the demo, but D-Town is there. Munch with the punch back. Silence is in time, but no momentum behind this clear means the BU can just keep attacking. Hawkson able to get it to D-Town, who punches to midfield, but there's no one there, so Munch just re-aggresses, and Hawken, once again, has to initiate early on and sacrifice the power that SUU could have had on that rebound, and now it just leaves BU all the time in the world in order to just keep this attack going. D-Town, another desperate save. Morales trying to chase it down. Will not make it that far up, except on the bounce back, but Hawking this time is ready for it. 30 seconds to go, though, to find these two goals, and SUU has found nothing decisive yet to even get the ball in their own half. They cannot break out of their own zone. Butler is just stealing every boost pad, and any booming clear is just met with a Butler car. Munch gonna find a block here, but this is a good chance. Soft shot on, but off of the backboard and away. D-Town can't get it by one, and Southern Utah, they're out of time here. They need one, and they need it now, and then they're still going to need a miracle play. They're out of time. Silence might have had one more, but he's denied. Morales will make sure this one gets forked away from one. Hawken will score, but it's zero time. It's one consolation prize in game number two. It's a 1-1 series. Yeah, hey, at least you know that you can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Butler going into game three, right? I feel like that's the takeaway from a goal like that. SUU, they kept pressing forward. They kept making sure that Butler has to keep on their toes so that they don't start absolutely snowballing. And that is really impressive stuff. Keeping it to, once again, just a one-goal deficit. Everyone really putting in the work. Southern Utah, unfortunately, they just could not get out of your own half. Like they said, look at that. 
13 to 5 shots over the course of the game. That is pretty dang brutal for the time being. But Southern Utah, I think they can bounce back just as Butler did this time around. It's just a question of who is going to be there on the game uh, three times at this point. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see, but I think you hit the nail on the head there. They cannot break out of their own zone. That was the huge difference maker in that second half of that game. Butler, so oppressive at the midfield and with just the boost management, boost control, stealing every pad, every corner. Southern Utah could not get any power behind any of their clears. They're going to have to change up their game plan because you saw Butler. The way they're breaking out of their own zone, they're finding each other in passing lanes. All three members are able to move up pretty consistently. So it's up to Southern Utah, I think, to make the adjustment here. Entirely possible, but how quickly can they adapt? They might have had a breakaway chance there, but Akashi's able to get that block. Another chance here. Empty net maybe for the double tap, but Munch can't punch it in. The rebound is sent wide. Southern Utah dodge a bullet there. I felt the pain in you trying to get to a stopping point, but Butler just does not keep, uh, just not stop. They just keep on going, and, and we have to follow that, as does Southern Utah. They do for now, but now the attack is back. Morales faking out too. Hawken and D-Town both committing to this clear away, but that just leaves room for Akashi with a shot, but Silence with the save. Morales isn't back there in time, and Southern Utah, they dodge another bullet, but the onslaught doesn't stop just yet. Morales back over to the other corner. Silence finally able to bounce it back, but Butler University has confined this space yet again in Southern Utah. They have to break free. They have to find the time to do that, though, and it might be now, other end of the pitch, and Butler had to go back and grab those corner boosts. Enough of a monopoly was kept. And now the breakaway. Morales forced to save. Hawking going to try and shoot it off the backboard. No follow-up except for D-Town, but it's too slow. And Morales clears it back this time. And Southern Utah feels like they're in a kind of panic state right now. They're flying at every ball defensively because Butler's applying such pressure. And then their offense, it's all out of sorts. The follow-ups aren't clean. The touches are kind of off. And there's no easy... Uh, kind of sequence for this rotation to follow through on and Southern Utah now they have to work all over again to break out of their own zone they get it past the midfield line but Morales is up on the wall looking for Akashi they send it down into the corner Morales doesn't get the challenge win and Munch will have to back off of this one as Morales looks to make a play takes the mid boost but silence swoops in a play here past Akashi, but only for a moment. They'll still get a piece of this ball. It gets bogged down in the corner once more. The pinch goes all the way across. And as we approach that halfway marker, still a couple of golden chances to score, but no capitalization until maybe here Morales gets punched off by two players and D-Town will have a clear. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about this domination as much as we want, but Butler still has yet to score this game. It's halfway through and Butler still hasn't found that ticket through. Morales gonna try and get it off that wall. It's the rest of Southern Utah attempts to make some headway. Silence gonna demo Munch though, so that momentum might be put to a stop for a moment here as Morales is just able to back pass it away. It's Butler continuing to try and press this narrative, they still haven't gotten this territory fully back. Southern Utah, they've been able to hold down these corner boosts a lot more efficiently. And so Butler has had to retreat a lot more often. Now comes Silence with the rush down, but Butler, they're a little too packed in at the moment. Southern Utah, they've got to wear them down. Oh, that's a good chance, but Hawken is denied the rebound. What a save by Akashi there. A lot of players just kind of roll with the ball there, but they are ready to react to that quick follow-up. But I was going to say, Southern Utah, they've got to be very careful here. A couple of times that they've gotten an air dribble, they've immediately gone for the air dribble bump play. And that's going to be something that they're consistently going for. Very threatening, but if you do it a lot, the team will be expecting of it. The defense will read that play with a minute 20 here. A chance now. Akashi found the angle. The shot is on. John! Good crossbar and down, and Butler breaks the tie. A gorgeous threading of the needle by Akashi had to get it past D Town, and from then on, it was just a question of did you hit the right angle? And Akashi, he did. Butler's up 1 0, 78 seconds to go. Southern Utah is now officially on a time crunch, or else the lead in the series will be completely eviscerated, and Butler will be one step away from handing Southern Utah their second loss of the season.
They kept it close before. D-Town gets a good dunk. Much has to respond to this one. Silence with a chance to shoot. For the far post and under the crossbar and in. You want answers. Southern Utah's got him. They've tied it back up. A beautiful equalizer after so much disruption was going on in that corner. Look at that. All three members stuck in there. No way to efficiently circle back around. The defensive cycle was completely non-existent in Southern Utah. They found a foot back in the door. 50 seconds left. And one of these teams, once again, has to stick that exclamation point on this game in order to hand the lead over to one side going into game four. Butler on these corners attempting to once again wear out Southern Utah. And that's going to do it, Akashi! A beautiful interception after silence. No power behind it. Munch punches through. And Hawken just barely missing it all. Butler is back on top. And in 36 seconds, they will be in the series too. Cock is just a monster on the field. Where does he find these angles? Where does he find these touches? The read he has on some of these plays is something else to watch. Still, short time remaining. Silence is going to put one on. Munch, oh, the rebound. Silence nearly got a piece of it. Now Munch looking to clear. Off the hood of Akashi. That one's on D-Town. Has to respond to it. Ten seconds now remaining here in regulation. In Southern Utah, they still need one. On the backboard, Morales back down low. Oh, they get wow. over top of one. That's going to buy so much time. This ball has to stay up now. D-Town across their own net. Silence on the dribble, but he can't keep it up. And Butler is on match point. What a sick final maneuver for Morales to cement that game. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And Butler, they come away with it once more by just one goal. 11 shots to six this time. Southern Utah, they did bridge that gap a little bit. But once again, it is still clear. Butler has the attack a little bit more. And so they had more chances to score just by a bit. Just by enough to bring that game forward. Now they just need one more and they will be four and one. They will be part of the cream of the crop in the conversation officially, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Butler, this is a squad that you got to remember has a very high ceiling. Last year, they were shut out a lot and it was a lot of kind of a, a, a growing pain because it, from season two, when they had that great run to the semifinals to season three, big roster changes, two thirds of the roster left. And it was just Kai. Just Kai trying to do his thing, and you saw what he can do in a series like this as Munch trying to get the scoring early here. The play in front of the net, so dangerous they don't find one. Another shot off the crossbar. You can hear the iron if this were hockey, but it's not quite. And Morales now off the backboard, no one able to follow up on it. And Butler, they just waste no time putting pressure on this defense right off a kickoff. And Morales with the flip reset. Hawken able to get the block. And Butler has excelled at this every game in the series so far, even though when they lost in game number one, they've just been so good at winning these kickoffs, at least to the very beginning of the game, and just exerting that pressure right out the gate. They did it every single game thus far. They won possession first every single time thus far, but this is the longest they've maintained pressure outside of that kickoff. We've nearly been a minute deep, and Southern Utah has gotten this ball to the other side twice, but Silence only needs one chance! A beautiful demo to clear a now open path for Southern Utah! on to grab an early lead. Silence with the muscle saying, get out of my way. This ball is going into the back of the net. The demo was everything and Butler's defense saw it all too late. And maybe off kickoff they have another. Yes, they do. It's D-Town right up Main Street to make it two to nothing. Oh, Akashi losing out on that. And Morales full on whiffing. Southern Utah jumping the gun. Now they're two up. Four minutes to go. They have to hold on to this in order to take us to five. Oh, Zoe, despite the identical records, despite the minimal information we had, I could never have expected that this series would go a distance like this. It is something else to behold as this one high up the backboard. Kai looking for a demo in front. Didn't find anyone, but the shot never came through. Now a chance. D-Town has to make this save. Silence is there along the boards. Akashi 
with the dunk. Do they find another? D-Town getting a piece of that ball, just enough to force it wide. Morales off the hood of their car. Silence in transition. Can't put it on. A demo comes through once more. Now a chance off the hood of Akashi. And Butler, they're able to move this ball out of their own zone, but Southern Utah, they're kind of clear game has woken up but maybe overextended a chance high and wide Morales in front silence is gonna get the save Hawkin now has to make a play they'll go up the wall has a little bit of boost in the tank to work with but Munch sneaking in from underneath will deny the aerial dribble attempt Southern Utah has been doing such a great job of just dragging Butler back down because uh, Butler's aerial control is absolutely phenomenal. Southern Utah, they haven't been able to compete for the most part when it comes to those carries, those juggles, those 50-50s in the skies. But Southern Utah, they haven't had to care about that when Butler has had to play this low for this long. And here they are again, they can't find any altitude just because the early denial. Hawking doesn't have to defend, luckily gets out of that one at least, but now comes the drive and there's no one free. A little too high though, and Munch whiffs! Another attacking cycle has to come through, and now there's so much less time on the board to show for it. 2.15, and Southern Utah is already looking to grab that ball back. But if I'm Southern Utah, I'm shaking in my boots right now. There, are, have, there have been so many chances for Butler to put one on the board, but it's just gotten away from him, a pass just out of reach. But the lanes are there. They're finding each other in transition. They're winning these 1v1s. There's no time for Southern Utah to get those challenges that they were, that they were getting earlier this season. And right now, Southern Utah, it's up to them once again to try and make the adjustment. They have the lead right now, but all the momentum you feel like is starting to shift Butler's way here because of the time of possession that the Bulldogs have had. Southern Utah trying to keep this at the back line. Munch pressing this forward a little bit. Butler just trying to expand back out, but Silence has the rush down the angle, almost taken by Kashi. They were just in time for the save, but you can't. Rest on those laurels. You have 70 seconds to grab two goals at least in order to make sure that this is done in four. D-Town with the drive back away though and Butler will now have to waste another huge portion of the time at least getting out of their own goal if they can keep Southern Utah from scoring again. And that's not out of the question. D-Town with the rush down towards the corner wins the 50-50 to an extent, but SUU still having a reset. Doesn't matter though, when you have this two goal lead, Silence just keeping it down. And now it's just a game of keep away for Southern Utah. Kashi trying to get it up, but D-Town just resets it again. Morales with a clear and gonna be met halfway. Hawking now with the line drive down the middle. Morales having to work overtime just to get back to it. Crazy defensive sequence there from Butler. And now they give their offense a chance here. They've got some boost to work with, but they'll lose out on mid. Munch now, looking for the boost steal. Nothing in the tank here to follow up on that passing play. Everyone caught too far forward. This is an open net for Silence to shut down that series. Southern Utah up three to nothing. And with that goal, that just might be enough to push us to game five. And I think that just comes from Butler having to admit that like they can't play defensively at this point. They need to go all or nothing. Full risk for full reward in order to have a chance at getting the reset off the kickoff and maybe taking this to OT. Southern Utah, they grab it back and they punish cleanly enough for it. So that is going to be the wash. We are going to game five here. One of these teams about to drop their second loss of the season, but both teams fighting tooth and nail to make sure it isn't them. Southern Utah winning games one and four. Butler winning games two and three. This is anybody's. But this is, it should be said, the most decisively won game. It's the first time that neither of these teams, uh, that, that one of these teams hasn't scored, I believe, um, in a game. And it's the first time that a team has won by more than one goal this series as well. Yeah, I, I, I think, I believe that's correct. And Southern Utah, the benefactors of, I, I feel like it, it's interesting. Butler is usually the team that's been getting the early jump. They are usually the team that's been early to apply pressure and they did so again in this game and yet southern utah they were the ones putting the goals on the board they were the ones getting on the board quickly and it, it almost felt like a like a lacrosse style game where the goals just come in bundles right just all the momentum was on southern utah's side they pick up two very quickly and then it, it's back to that back and forth game back to that you know one chance here one chance there and then 
all of a sudden, you saw the momentum shift Butler's way. They couldn't score off the back of it, but because of that kind of back and forth momentum, it really feels like anyone's game headed into game number five. Yeah, if you caught that in the, in the statistics from the previous game, Southern Utah still shot less than Butler did eight as opposed to nine. Butler's hyper aggression didn't end up working because Southern Utah, they could hold it down in the moments where they had to defend, which were very many. And here comes another, is Munch off the backboard in Southern Utah, they have to back out again. But it's clear at this point, this far into the series, they are ready to hold it down and just work when they are able to. Deep Town, another clear after Morales drives it exceedingly close to that goal. Munch now trying to get it out of this corner and Butler, once again, they maintain this pressure for quite some time. Still nothing on the board though, that needs to change. I've come up with something here, Munch. Wow, what a challenge across there. Morales not ready for how hard he was going to win that 50. Um, a whiff by Silence leaves it in an awkward spot for Hawken. Now down in front, Morales is looking for more boost. The bump comes through on Munch, but no shot will be opted for. D-Town will race after this one. Gonna fork that one off the corner. Threatening in mid, but it's just played to the opposite side. Hawken with a demo as well. And a lot of pace behind this ball. No one can get it into a shooting lane right now. But here's a chance from midfield. That one's off the backboard and down for the double tap. No, Munch there to clean it up, but sends it high and wide. D-Town now for silence. The dribble attempt here, they pick up the mid boost. They've got some space to work with. No flip reset though. They'll just have to pinch it and burn one defender. But Munch is there to quickly respond and both defenses now very cautious, very aware that they have to keep up with the pace of play, but no one willing to make that one mistake. Oh wow, oh, what Morales! a run for Morales! Morales out of nowhere, just rising up for the competition after Munch wins that pinch. D-Town didn't have the boost to get on it, but Morales did, and Morales capitalized at the perfect moment. Oh, what a massive shift this game has taken now the pressure truly on southern utah once again to find their way out of this when they are attacking less throughout this game they found their comfort in that once they had grabbed the lead but butler has won every time they have taken the lead so far this series akashi whipping though and deep town brings it back on it less than halfway through game five and we're right back where we started how about the kick pass there from Hawkin? That is a hard angled shot and Akashi, he does not miss many of those. That one with some speed behind it to sneak it inside that near post. That's the equivalent of passing it behind the goalie and not putting a shot on net in hockey. That is a strange angle that you'll almost never see, but Southern Utah find it. And now in transition, they almost have one. Couldn't put the shot on. Able to stretch the field as Butler there. Now, off the backboard, it's Hawkin with the shot! And Southern Utah and the Thunderbirds are back in the lead. Another beautiful capitalization this time from Hawkin on the great distance pass. Once again, not even halfway through this game in Southern Utah, now they are back in the driver's seat. Can they keep it held down? Or will Butler find their way in? Morales down to silence. We're stuck in midfield. Akashi wins the 50, but there should be enough time to at least wrestle it back. No, Hawken whips. Morales can bring it back over, but a little too far. No one's set just yet. It's too early in the kickoff, but Butler has been doing a great job of getting that early pressure post kickoff. So see if they can continue that as Morales back over to this corner. Misses against Hawkins early clear. Now it's a breakaway. No one's there in time, but Hawkins isn't going to be able to catch up to that ball to find the immediate shot. Southern Utah losing that pressure with D-Town also getting demo now. Takashi who has a potential shot and is going to make it into the upper 90. Butler has tied it up once more. In transition again, Akashi just receives this pass from Munch and it's a beautiful lofting shot. D-Town had just been demoed, I believe. He's got no time to react and he gets to generally the right spot, but it's not the right line. And Butler have found their window back into the game. They are able to get out of their own defensive zone so efficiently, but Southern Utah has been quick to pounce on errors and speak it up. Can't leave silence with that much room to shoot. Southern Utah's back in the lead. I'm losing my mind at this game, so this is absolutely ridiculous. Both teams bringing their absolute A games to the offense, including 
Southern Utah University. 100 seconds now to try and hold on to this lead for the second time that they've had it this game. Silence, a beautiful way to get it started. Akashi with the bump back to make sure that this isn't an immediate goal, but Butler, they gotta get this pressure back. They gotta do it quick if they want a chance of taking this. Once again, they have shot more the past three games, but Southern Utah, they won with less shots last game. They prove they can do it once. They might be able to do it again. Pressure still coming through. Silence and early pinch out. And Munch now has to play the mental battle. Actually, no, it's a back pass to D-Town. And Butler, they now have to get their defensive cycle rolling before they can turn it into a goal. And Akashi whiffing. That's massive for Southern Utah's stall. A minute remaining here between Southern Utah and Butler. And Akashi trying to make up for it best he can with a clutch save. Now in transition. Hard off the backboard. No one with a touch yet again. Butler, the ball's in the right spot, but no player is there to follow up on it. Munch with a settling pass here for Morales. Hawkin is there to respond, though. Morales, that's a shot on. Two players there. The dunk nearly came through, but D-Town and Hawken are here in the corner. Munch sends one right to the nose of D-Town. Munch gets the bump as well, but Silence is able to get back in time. The defensive rotation from Southern Utah might just be too clean. Hawken not able to play this one. Akashi's got to get this ball downfield. The net's open if they win the race. But look again. The defense able to make a stand. Ten seconds now remaining. Ball back into the Butler half. Munch centering pass. No, gets demoed. D-Town sends it forward. Silence is there. Akashi comes across. The pass is there. This ball has to not hit the ground for the side of the Bulldogs. Morales up to the backboard. Sent down in. And no one can corral it. Southern Utah are going to take game five. It came down to consistency. Whichever team made more mistakes was going to be the team that ended up taking that fall. And Butler, they just whiffed a little more a, a little more often. Both these teams, they were so good at touching the ball, at least getting their paws on it to an extent. But there was no momentum behind a lot of those shots. It's why Southern Utah couldn't dig themselves out in the middle of this series. And it's why Butler wasn't able to get a proper attack going in the final 45 seconds of that last game. Southern Utah, they just applied too much pressure. And Butler, they couldn't burst out of it in time. Southern Utah, they are your victors. 3-2 brings them to a 4-1 to one record. And we'll chat with them in a second after this short break. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the EGFC. We are joined by Silent from the side of Southern Utah after they get the Game 5 victory over Butler. Silent, how's the squad feeling after a very close and intense set against the Butler Bulldogs? Uh, we we all feel pretty good. We all made really good decisions toward the end uh, and changes that needed to be had. Um, we noticed some play style things that we had to change in order to um, change the scoreline and, and get ahead. Yeah, Silent, we, we, we talked about this a lot before the games actually started is uh, due to unfortunate scheduling, Southern Utah hasn't really had a chance to prove themselves uh, against another team these entire four weeks. So, you know, going into, uh, I think, Southern Utah's first, like, really big test when it came to EGF, uh, how are you guys feeling going into a match like that? What was morale like when, when everything started? Honestly, we all just are happy just to even play as an underdog team we really go into into it with a good mindset rather than being negative that's something that we really are working hard on and, and just and just being relaxed when we get into the game um and I'm, I'm happy that all of us throughout the games have stayed mentally sound in that in that mindset and uh kept to it yeah, that mental game really proved to, to, to come into action when Butler was able to grab games two and three. I mean, their hyper aggression was really proficient uh, when the series started leveling up. Uh, I mean, wh what was uh, what were the talks like for Southern Utah? How did you guys resolve to make sure that you could take out games four and five and, and the series with it? Like I said earlier, just realizing what we were making mistakes in, like double commits and just calm issues. Um, but other than that, just enjoying the time that we are having while playing and laughing while doing it is a big thing for all of us rather than getting in our own heads. Um, so just, just like I said, good vibes and making the necessary changes we had to do. It was a lot of fun to watch you guys in this series and you guys get the win uh, three to two. I guess my, my question moving forward for you guys, you guys still have a lot of tough games coming up in that, that tough Western Conference. You guys are going to have to go up against UTA, who took down the defending champs. 
uh, later on the season at some point. So I guess my question for you, what is what is the game plan for, you know, you guys moving forward, uh, looking into, you know, say next week where you guys have a tough matchup? What's the game plan? What's the prep work look like for you guys? Uh, try to get a few scrims in, maybe um, just hang out, enjoy comp, and especially doing like real life things as well, we find kind of helpful for us just mindset wise. Um, so maybe just going out to our uh, computers that we have on campus and, and practicing when we can. Awesome. Love to hear it. All right. Well, one last question for you. Is there anyone that you would like to thank or shout out uh, to while you are here with us? The floor is yours. I mean, shout out to my team. Obviously, they, uh, they're they awesome in their mindset and everything like that. And shout out to Don and the support. Awesome. Great to hear it. All right. Thank you so much, Silent, for joining us. And congratulations again on your victory over Butler this week. Thanks, Silent. Uh, thank you. All right, well, that's one series in the books for us, and we got one last one to go. Should be a fun one. Normally, it'd be Hawaii, but this time around, it's going to be Marquette, the Golden Eagles, going up against the newcomers of USC, the Trojans. Should be a fun one, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.